Hi, in this video, you are going to see how we can install a PySpark in Collab environment so that we can get started with our coding exercise as part of the Mastering Apache Spark course. Uh, the instructions I'm going to provide here is very similar if you want to install in your local uh, Windows uh, desktop. Only thing you need to uh, get the right version of uh, Java for Windows rather than uh, rather than the Unix version which I'll be using here. So let's get started. The installation is a pretty straightforward process. So Spark is written in Scala, so it requires JVM. So the very first thing you will do is you will install JVM. Uh, that's the very first line. So I'm installing OpenGDK. Uh, I'm installing Java 8. So make sure like you have Java 8 or above. And then what I'm doing is I'm going into Apache Spark website and downloading Apache Spark uh, 2.4.5, which is the latest stable release. Now, in case if you want an higher version, like the preview version, Spark 3.0, uh, you can go to the same website, uh, basically downloads.apachispark.org spark. Then you can go into the Spark 3.0.0 preview folder and downloading the respective uh, package. Right here, I am using Spark 2.4.5. And once I have downloaded the Spark 2.4 4.5 bin Hadoop, I am unzipping it. And then I'm also inst installing a package called FindSpark. So FindSpark is a GitHub uh, package. What it will do is it will allow you to uh, find the Spark and set the system.path variable. So that's what FindSpark does. So I'm going to run this. It's going to now install JDK. It's going to uh, basically download the Spark binary. Then it is also going to unzip the Spark binary and install the find Spark component. So that's what it does. Now, once that is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, print a user lib JVM folder to see what are, what are all the other different JVMs available. So you can say there's 1.11, there is a JDK 8 that we downloaded, right? This is what we are going to use. There's also another JDK. If you want, we can use that, but I'm going to use the one we have downloaded it. I am also installing PyHarrow. Again, this is completely optional. Uh, now, what happens like when, when you're working in Collab, uh, you want to bring the data from Spark data frame to Pandas data frame. So uh, when you're bringing the data from Spark data frame to Pandas data frame, the typically how it works is, uh, yeah, now again, a Python, uh, PySpark as an uh, Py4j binding. Uh, which kind of takes the data, pickle it, send it over to the driver node, and then unpickle it. This serialization, pickling and unpickling is very expensive. So in order to, in order to overcome that, we are installing PyArrow. Py so you can set that serialization as PyArrow, and PyArrow, Pandas, and Spark are PyArrow compatible. So without the serialization and deserialization, the objects are gets uh, objects gets passed directly to uh, Pandas uh, from Spark. So if you want to use matplotlib or some of the Python packages, from uh, then you can uh, set py arrow and then move it fast. So I have this already installed in my uh, system. That's why it's telling its requirement already satisfied. Now, very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the Java home and Spark home. So basically, I downloaded Apache Spark in this location and Java home. We just saw it was in userlib JVM. So I'm setting the both the environment path Java home underscore uh, home, Java home and pass Spark home. Then what I'm doing is I'm importing the find spark component and calling the find spark uh, dot init. So this find spark or init will go and uh, search for spark and set it in the system path. Right, it's going to go to the Spark home and set in the system path. Then I am importing Spark session. So in order for us to work with uh, Spark, what we need is we need a Spark context. Right, that's what here I'm importing it. And then what I'm telling that Spark session dot builder master is local. Since I don't have a distributed environment, my driver node and executor node are going to be local collab environment. So it, I'm telling it's local. It's I'm asking it to create. So it will create a Spark object for me. And then afterwards, I, am, I can set the Spark configuration. So basically, typically, when you, how do you run a Spark job? You use a Spark submit. And with the Spark submit, you will pass executor memory and driver memory parameter. Instead of passing over that, you are just setting uh, it your real. You can set like how much executor memory you want to allocate, how much driver memory you want to allocate, what is the memory fraction you want to allocate. So that's what I am doing over here right in addition when you submit a spice park job you may you may pass like a lot of arguments like iphone iphone jars or uh pi, pi files and everything so if there's a dependent library pi files you may pass that if there is a jar file that is dependent you may pass that say you want to run spark on xg boost then you may pass jar, jar files if you are running spark on tensorflow then you may pass additional python files right so you can use these two one if you want to pass jar files or any other submit arguments that you want 
want to give you can just set the os environment variable pi spark submit args and pass the uh, exact spark submit argument so in this if you want to add a python file in the spark context you can just say spark dot spark context dot add py files and you can add the python files so these two steps are there so whatever you do with your spark submit you can do it here as well right now quickly uh, spark is installed the steps are pretty you can see it's only like two step process if you remove the py arrow you don't py arrow is optional it's only a two step process right now what i can do is i can quickly test my spark i am importing these three packages url lib and temp file and since i'm this i'm doing it only to download and now uh, the url lib to download a data set to test and i'm setting the base directly temp and then just an output file which i'm telling slash temp slash credit data dot csv so i'm just defining the data and what i'm doing is i am downloading the data from uci repository and telling send it to the output file the output file is nothing but slash temp slash credit uh, data dot csv so once i run this the data will get downloaded into a slash temp slash credit data dot csv so i can just do an ls and you can ls slash tmp because it's in tmp so you can see the credit data.csv is downloaded right now what i am doing is i am just creating a spark.read.option i am telling infer the schema from the data set i am passing the data set that we downloaded and i am just telling error false so it will by default assign the iphone c1 iphone c2 and everything i am running this you can do a credit df.show uh, to check the data and then you can just do and uh, you can see like okay the data data is there whatever is there in the file uh, data is there now you can do a, a count uh, quick, uh, quickly run action on the data frame to see the count so uh, uh, so you can in, you have installed spark we have tested whether spark is running or not now you can use all the spark transformation and action variable and play around with the data set or bring your own data set and play it around so quickly wanted to show you how to install uh um, install spark in collab you can also do it in your conda environment um when once you go into the detail session you can either use this environment or there is other video on how to run it in the uh, collab uh, in, in the databricks environment uh, the you can check that video how to uh, get started on databricks the you can click the link on the top to get started you can use any of this environment to with to play around with the uh, course content uh, as part of this particular series thank you